we're going to talk a little bit about universal motors, in particular the universal condenser fan motor and a universal blower fan motor. What I have here on the table is one of each. The advantage to universal motors is they allow us to have a few motors doing the work of many motors. So instead of having a lot of motors on our truck, we can stock a couple of motors. If you still want to go back and use an OEM motor, that's fine, but you might not have to if you keep a couple of these guys in stock. You run a late night call, or an emergency call, these will save you almost every time. Let's take a look at the condenser fan motor first. That's this guy here. If you want to know how I know, well look at the side. There's no ventilation holes. There's ventilation holes in a blower motor. You can see here on the edges. So we know our condenser motor is going to be out in the rain. It's got to be sealed up. Universal condenser motor means that it can replace multiple horsepower motors of usually that one speed. This particular one can go anywhere from a third to a sixth horsepower. So if we want to uh, replace anything, a, a third, a quarter, a fifth, we got, the, we got the motor. It's right here. We got the studs that are longer than they need to be. We can cut them down. We got the shaft that's longer than it needs to be. We can cut it down. It's multi-mount positions. It can hang or it can go up. It has drain plugs on the top and the bottom. We're always going to remove the plug that's on the bottom so moisture can escape. The other thing is if we leave the plugs in and the seals overheat, it'll chase the lubrication away from our seals. So we want to pay attention to that. In addition, we have a reversing plug on the side. allows us to reverse the rotation. That's very nice. Connections for our capacitor and connections for our 230 volts. Condenser fan motor is pretty cut and dried. The right voltage is almost always 230 volts. It's only the speed we're concerned about. 1075, sometimes 825, and then you got it. So there's your condenser fan motor. If we go into the blower motor, it's pretty much the same thing. This one motor replaces motors from three-fourths of a horsepower down to one-fifth of a horsepower. And it accomplishes that by different capacitors. Okay, that's another difference in this particular motor. If we want to make it a three-quarter horsepower motor, we're going to hook the capacitor leads, the brown leads up, to a different size capacitor. So what changes this motor's horsepower is the capacitor. When we buy the motor, we probably are going to get all three capacitors. We're always going to get new capacitors with new motors. Now in the blower motor, kind of the same thing. The mounting positions can be any one. We have various speed selections to choose from. A lot of blowers use multiple speeds, um, typically a lower speed for heat than cool. And a lot of times with a blower motor, we're going to have to add a belly band, okay? Blower motors most always mount this way and go into the blower housing. A lot of times this belly band is made on the side. These ears are welded to the side of the motor, and that's what holds the motor in. When we get a universal motor, it's not going to have that. So we can also buy a belly band, which will easily slip over the motor, tighten up, and now we have our mounting ears to mount it to the side of the blower. Works great. Gets the job done. If there's any hint that I would pass along to you, is before you put the belly band on, take a picture of this right here. Once you put the belly band on and you try to look at that, it's probably going to be covered up. So I would always take a picture of the wiring diagram and the motor information before I mount the belly band. Using these universal motors is great. It saves your truck stock, eliminates a lot of what you have to keep, makes you more productive on service calls, and it's a time and cost saver.